Hey guys, we're back. Part two of the gym tour. Sorry about that. Getting back to power blocks. What we were talking about was why I went with the pro option. Okay, why I didn't go with the rubber coated option. The quick and short, the rubber coated option makes your power blocks wider. When you're going to do a bicep curl, something like that, it means that you, as you get to, you know, heavier weights, longer dumbbells means potentially less range of motion, less ability to you know, do the exercise you want to. And so I went with the thinner, lower profile version so that I could get better range of motion as the weight goes up. And, you know, I don't know if you've seen the videos online of people carrying the rubber ones, but they extend out probably to here, maybe even here. And it, it looks kind of goofy in my opinion. Uh, yeah, you do have some rattle of the plates, but that's what you'd expect with, uh, you know, this kind of metal that's not coated. A little more classic feeling, feels maybe a little more uh, prone to damage and chipping, but I'm willing to, to do that trade-off. I think this is the best power block you can buy, period, um, for the home gym. Obviously, they have the commercial versions, but for the price difference, I mean, for the price of a commercial version, you could buy a ton of real urethane dumbbells from Rep Fitness like these. Uh, so I don't think those are worth it. I looked at them, not worth it for my, for my setup. These are the best deal if you have the money. And if you're willing to pay a little more to get a better product, I'd recommend them. Let's see. What else do we have? Uh, real quick, the attachments, yes. These are some DIY attachments. Okay, again, safety straps that we just got creative with some long straps so you can do all kinds of movements. Really a fan. I believe these are the Carmen safety straps from Amazon. Um, and we'll link them and with everything else in this gym. Jump ropes, you know, don't use them enough, <laughs> but at least we have some storage, right? Right here, here's something that just got punched through and eaten up. But what it is, is it basically explains what I did was I printed this offline and explains what the approximate weight range is for your band at uh, let's say regular tension and at around max tension and I'm a huge fan of this if you guys want you could screenshot this as a as a guide or as a reference but here are the bands we have I want to get more um, these ones we got from Elite FTS but essentially they're all created at like the same few factories and different companies just uh, sell them. So we'll link below to some of them so you guys can check them out and get them. Bands, huge thing. They're, they're cheap, they're versatile. Even for a home gym like this where we have so much, I still use these every workout for warming up and so on. Really, really good value. We have a fan for the summer months. We are in California, so it gets pretty hot here. Um, the lighting, something I would change, and something that I'm going to talk about now is like what what I might do a little differently in this gym is the lighting. If you look at the roof, you can see that all of our lights are basically light bulbs, and we have this nice lamp here. During the daytime and lifting, not a huge deal. I don't really often turn on the lights anyway besides those two in the back. But getting some really nice lighting, you know, that you can just put on the roof and, hold on, I'll show you guys right here. It's essentially like this kind of light, but without the case really, and the lights just drill right in the roof. And if I were to do it again, hold on, what I do is, is uh, basically put them down one, one strip two strips here, three strips, four strips, and that's probably a ton of lights. Maybe I'd do less, but you get the idea. Like, I, I mean, the lighting in here is a huge thing and it makes a real big difference. Um, something I did do aesthetically was I put down some flags over there. I like that a lot. We thought of drywalling that wall and insulating it. The only thing is that if you look at the roof up here, this is where in the, in the summer, this side of the garage, this third car garage, I mean, it's a toaster. It is super hot. And 
we thought about insulating this wall back here. The only thing is it wouldn't do much if we didn't insulate the ceiling and to get back there and pull everything down out of the attic, it's a huge, I mean, it's, it's a big job, okay? It's, uh, it's not something we're looking to do at the time and we're still not really looking to do. As you can tell, we're moving out of the gym, so we're definitely not looking to do that right now. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're in a climate that fluctuates, the temperature fluctuates more often and more drastic than in Southern California, I might consider to insulate your garage. It's a good option. I mean, our garage doors also are not insulated to the touch. I mean, this is warm right now, okay? It is November right now, late November, and for some reason, reason it's pretty hot in Southern California. Um, this time of year, just, just so happens to be this year, it's pretty hot year. And uh, in the summer though, it does get super hot. What you can do to, to avoid that is just avoid peak hours, you know? 10 to two, maybe, or uh, nine to four, just stay out of the gym during those uh, really peak heat hours. So yeah, I would definitely change the lighting if I stayed here. And like, if this were the gym, I'd stay at forever, let's say, change the lighting, drywall everything, uh, figure out a way to better store the bikes. We have basically what we have already here. I mean, it's a huge eyesore, right? But what I would do is I would take the bikes probably put them against that wall vertically. So I take it like this and put the wheels against the wall and do that and create a storage system. Probably put the mats in front of it. I don't know, see it's a big, it's a kind of a headache and it's something that's why it looks this way is because I couldn't figure out how to best organize it. If you guys have ideas on maybe what you've done or, done or what you're looking to do. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm still gonna have bikes and stuff. So even when we move to the next location, um, I'll have to figure out how to store them wherever I am, right? So if you guys have better ideas, like I'm not a fan of this. You, you could see I put down some towels just to make it a little nicer. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a, I mean, this is a really good part of the gym too. Like imagine if this were empty, underneath that, it's all, it's all horse stall mats. So that could be like, we were thinking of putting the dumbbells in this corner at one point and making that like the little dumbbell corner, but you know, at the end of the day, we had to, we had to put all this stuff somewhere. Um, and for a time we had it here where the dumbbells were and it just made the room feel so small because it was like front and center rather than in the corner. A good rule of thumb that you can use is tall things go against the walls. As you can see here, we try to keep our squat racks and our squat stands or heavy equipment pretty close to the roof, pretty close to the, uh, to the walls. And that way it helps create this open feel in the middle of the gym, right? And I mean, you see that with a lot of CrossFit gyms. They do a, a really good job of that. Um, and <laughs> maybe I'm not the best person for interior design, but I think I do have some experience with, you know, moving around the garage gym and figuring out what works well for us. Um, let's see if there's anything I didn't touch on real quick. Oh yeah, these are. this is the Sew Right. Is it necessary? Do I use it as much as I think I would? Uh, no, I thought I'd use it a lot more. It's just something that you have to sit down and use, kind of a pain. Um, and you also have to learn how to use it. I mean, you can't just sit on it and immediately start reaping the benefits. There's actually a real process and method you have to go through to get the maximum benefit. Um, I got this for around 40 bucks. At 80 bucks, I definitely wouldn't have gotten it. Uh, but I think I bought it for around 39.99, and I think that was a good deal because again, it's kind of like the Matt Black Friday, like, oh, it's a steal. It was 80, now 40. They got me there, they got me there. Um, right here, we have some, some cork yoga blocks. I like these, in hindsight, I'd probably just go with the regular, regular yoga blocks. Sometimes I put bands on them, like I'll put two like this and do push-ups or dips, let's say, and I'll put a band between them. Um, on, on push-ups, I don't put a band, sorry, I use a slingshot. But when I put bands for dips in between them, it kind of eats away at the cork. And I mean, it doesn't look like a lot here, but when you finely ground cork, it gets all over the gym floor. So in hindsight, I'd probably use the foam option. Something I made a few years back, and honestly has just been taking up space in the garage gym for a few years. <laughs> Let me show you real quick. These are some DIY, basically, med balls that cannot be dropped and are not super functional. This one is filled with sand. 
and weighs 27.2 pounds. This one, probably around the same. And in hindsight, like if you asked, if you told me, I've, I've had these in the garage for probably four years, okay? <laughs> I should have thrown these out four years ago and just bought some real medicine balls uh, based off the pure amount of money I've put into the gym. <laughs> like, I don't use them because I can't drop them. If I had some, you know, slam balls, I mean, I should have, this is something I should have done a while ago. Um, they take up a lot of space. As you can see, all I do is stack stuff on them. You know, if you have nothing, this is good. At least you have some weight that you can hold and train with. But man, I should have tossed these years ago. These are some cheap bands from TJ Maxx. They're kind of like the hip circle kind where they're not very long. Uh, we don't really use them ever. But when we start to travel, now that things are opening up, with uh, COVID pretty much, you know, slowing down a bit. I'm gonna take these when I travel. I'm gonna take these bands and I'm gonna take a bunch of these bands and, you know, hotel rooms and so on. I think that's gonna be a really good opportunity to get some training in, even if there's not a hotel room gym. Moving over here. I don't know if I showed you these, maybe you saw them earlier in the video. We also have the 70 and 75 pound pair of dumbbells. As you can tell right now, pretty dusty. Um, like I said, it's kind of a pain to have to pick them up from the floor. So I kind of revert more to the power blocks. I think it's, uh, you know, it's on a stand. It's at an easier height to pick up. So easy to adjust that we just, we've been using that right here. We have the Ryobi car buffer. This is something, I mean, I made a video of this and I think Rogue should buy out Ryobi or buy out the pattern or something like that of this and brand it as fitness equipment. In my opinion, this is better than, uh, what do you call it? Your, you know, your, oh, I'm having a brain fart. It's, it's the machine, uh, <laughs> the massage gun. Oh, thank you. I got it. So this is better than your 200 or $150 massage gun. This thing costs in the thirties to $40 range. Um, man, I love this. I did a video about it. If you want to learn more about it, check it out there. But this is a game changer for recovery, for warm-ups, and so on. I love it. Right here, got this at a garage sale for three bucks, like five years ago. I saw it in Target just the other day for around 35 bucks. It's a GoFit foam roller. I like it. It's comfortable. In the past, um, I did the DIY option. I just had a, a pipe, like a four-inch or three-inch. I had a four-inch PVC pipe that I got from Home Depot and paid like 12 bucks for it. And... I didn't realize because that was my first that was my first foam roller ever. Um, this was like probably four or five years ago, and <laughs> I didn't realize how much I was suffering for no reason. Like having to roll out my back with a PVC pipe was like a really weird workout slash torture test. This thing I got for three bucks from a garage sale. Beautiful, awesome. From now on, I'm only getting foam rollers that are proper, not PVC pipes. <laughs> Oi. Got these babies. These are the Griffin Fitness front foot stabilizers. And we got two sets of them. You'll see in the future why we're getting, why we got them and what they're going to do in our next gym. I think we've covered pretty much all the big things, guys. Thank you for coming along. And I mean, hey, if you, if you stuck around until now, you either have a lot of free time or you're really looking to build out a home gym or you have one. And you know what? I appreciate that, okay? I, I really appreciate someone who takes the time to consider what they want to buy, what they want to invest in on their fitness journey and for their health. I think that's really admirable. And I think you guys deserve a shout out, okay? I don't think enough people say to the home gym community, like, wow, good job. You guys are killing it. You're investing in something that's, that's reaping benefits that you may not see now. You might see a week from now. You might see it five years from now. You might see it 20 years from now. But kudos to you guys. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, subscribe, share. If you have any questions, I reply to all the comments. Um, and we have awesome people who also reply to the comments and share their feedback. Feel free to do that. If you have any questions, again, I mean, shoot my response. As I said in part one, before you go to buy a piece of equipment, Please, if you, if you think that this video sold you on a piece of equipment, comment any questions or comment and say, hey, I'm looking to buy this, what are your thoughts? 
because I would not buy every piece of equipment in here again if I did it again. Um, so please, to save you the money and save you the hassle, feel free to ask, uh, just so you don't get put in the position that I've been in so many times, which is buying a piece of equipment, only to find out a week later that you hate it and you want to get rid of it. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks again.